Now, I want, to, I want to look at two things. I just have about five minutes here, but I want to look really carefully at two things. I want to look at two ambitions, a greater light and a lesser light. One is the sun, the other is the moon. They're both a light, but in different degrees. Paul's first motive behind his ambition. Verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Wow. Such a reality here. And it is very difficult at times to hold this in attention. We are absolutely and perfectly accepted in the beloved. We will receive a welcome into heaven as those loved of God. We are perfectly righteous in Christ. All that must be affirmed, all a work of grace. Yet at the same time, I will give an account for my life. I know a man He's a dear friend of mine and a mentor, Angel Comenares, in Peru. I told a filmmaker one time, look, you need to. Uh, he was going to go to one of the, the largest mission conferences in the history of South America. And I said, instead of going there, come with me to the mountains of Peru. Before we left from the coast, we met Angel there. And he said, I need to find a battery. So we went out. We're looking in this dump for a battery. This little tiny Peruvian man. And the filmmaker's looking at me. He goes, I'm supposed to be in the greatest mission conference in the history of South America. And I'm walking around a garbage dump with this little man looking for a battery for him to power his little speaker so he can preach when we go up in the mountains. I said, wait for it. Just wait for it. Next 48 hours, we traveled in the back of grain trucks, in the back of cattle trucks, by mule, by foot. And I'll never forget that guy's face when we crested over that last hill. And there was about 1,500 mountain men and women waiting. At, at the most conservative estimate, I believe that that man left in his wake about 350 churches. Very little education. Very little anything. Except a love for souls and a belief that the word of God was inspired, inerrant, infallible, and all sufficient. Yeah, if you want to know what is a kind of a connecting thing between all men that have been used of God, it's that. And what I'm trying to say is he had nothing of many of the good things we, we have. And yet look what was accomplished through him. And I'm going to stand beside that man on the day of judgment. And I'm going to have to answer for all the good things, all the books I've had, all the opportunities to learn, all the great sermons I've been able to listen to, all the wonderful men that have influenced my life, everything. Did I just grow fat? Or did I respond as that man? I could take you all over the world to indigenous missionaries that we support and the TMAI guys that we support in different places. And you would just, I hope it would make you see, I've, I need to do something with my life. Because in this Great Commission thing, listen, it's not that complicated. You are either called to go or you're called to send. You're either to go down into the mine or hold the rope for those who go down. Either way, there's going to be scars on your hands. Gentlemen, show me the scars on your hands. Show me the scars on your life. Show me what it has cost you to serve Christ, to follow him and to carry out his Great Commission. Let me see the wounds. Don't expect them to be on your sons if you don't bear them yourself.